So it's it's that time of year. It is top 10 lists or top whatever lists uh, of the year. I am an indie game YouTube channel. And uh, now typically I, I do my best to keep my opinion to myself. Now, one thing I want to make sure I mention here. Um, if it's on my channel, I like it. I, I play a lot of games. Um, I'd say a good chunk of them do not make it onto the channel. And that's sort of my, that's my, my number one um, rule from, from my channel, which I've, I've done for, for years and I'm, I'm sticking with it, is if I don't like the game, I don't do a video. Um, if I do like the game, I make a video. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the first thing sort of out of the way. Uh, another thing, uh, for some reason when I do these videos, these, these top 10 list videos or whatever they are, um, YouTube likes to, like to share them amongst folks that, that aren't my regular uh, folks. Um, I kind of gear them towards my regular folks who kind of knows what uh, I think knows what I like and, and kind of what I play. But for some reason, it always brings in other folks. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube um, and you're one of those other folks, uh, hello, um, I'm Nook and I play indie games. I play a lot of indie games. I play uh, a new one every day. So I've, I've got uh, over 300 new indie game videos throughout the year. And, uh, and today is my day to, to have an opinion and tell you what I think about them. I pick out the favorites, uh, and, and we chat about what the favorites are. So I've broken this list into two parts. I have a top, top nine indie games of the year, is what the list is. One of them just got I just bumped it off, so that's why it's only nine instead of ten. Uh, we'll go through those, and then I will share my, uh, my favorite um, early access ones, or ones that I'm, I'm looking forward to in there, you know, between like number two and number one to make it exciting or whatever. So that is, uh, that's, that's the way this works. If you're here alive with me right now, feel free to ask me questions and I will answer them. Thanks, uh, Amon Mir for the follow. And, uh, and, and let's begin. So uh, I'm going to start with my number nine, which is The Captain. I played this one, actually I played this one pretty recently. It came out on December 3rd. Um, I would not normally put a, um, a point-and-click adventure game as as anywhere near the top of my list. I'm not normally a big fan of them. I do like things like Monkey Island and the old Sierra games or whatever, uh, LucasArts. Um, the thing, the reason I put this on the list uh, is because um, those those point-and-click kind of games, you know, it's like a it's it's a find-the-pixel in the right order kind of game. You gotta there, There's one way of doing it, uh, and that's it. And another reason that the captain is is on the list is because it, it takes that that old LucasArts uh, space quest style, um, but but each mission that you do has three has like three possible outcomes, and so there is not a right way of doing something. There is um, multiple ways. Uh, it also has a, a a button in there, so you can like it shows you where the pixels are to touch, rather than having to hunt around for them. But yeah, by Sissiat Games, Tomorrow Corporation, Fly, High Fly Works. Tomorrow Corporation, those are the folks that made... Uh, they, oh yeah, Little Inferno. Yeah, that's, that's that, folks. Or published, anyway. So, uh, that's my number nine, The Captain. Um, I, I never thought I'd have a day where I'd put a point-and-click adventure game in my top list, but there it is. Uh, number eight. Um, okay, so before I click number eight, um, I want you to bear with me. And another thing I want to point out is I play a lot of games. Um, and... And the one thing that probably stands out most to me is something that's a little bit different. Something that's, um, uh, you know, it's just not the same, right? Uh, so the number eight is Labyrinth City. Pierre, the maze detective. I, I first saw this one. I am uh, subscribed to the itch.io um, channel, uh, YouTube channel. And they play some games every once in a while. I'll just kind of show them off. Uh, they play this one, Labyrinth City. And I remember clicking on the video because I like the thumbnail looked cool, so I thought I'd look at it. Um, I watched like thirty seconds of it, and I'm like, ah, what a what a dumb game, you know? It's, it's like a little kids game. It's a little seek and find. Uh, where's Waldo? Where's Wally? Whatever um, thing. And uh, it went twenty five minutes, and I'm still watching it. Um, it's and I I, I I wrote down a thing over here. It's it's a fidget cube of a game. So as you're walking through, it's sort of like a maze. Um, but there's so many things you can like, you can touch the boat and it like smoke comes out. You can, you can touch the car, a car door opens, you can touch the statue and like it moves. Uh, there's just so many, it's just so much little things, um, in the game. And, uh, I actually got this for my, it's not a difficult game. I got this on my switch for my daughter who's five and, um, 
and and she can figure it out. She's she's made her way through. She made through the end, but she's made through several of the levels. Just you know, making her way through. So it's not a difficult game. It's just a uh, it's a fidget cube kind of game. Are those things still popular? Yeah, whatever. Um, but and then like we went on like a, a road trip. I got three kids. My my five year old was on the Switch, and then my sixteen year old and my fourteen year old were both like into it as well. So it's it's um. It's, it just it just hooks you uh, by by uh, Darjeeling and and Pixmane. Uh, I don't know. I've never messed with Labyrinth City, anything that those kind of games. So I guess it's like a popular series. I never heard of it until this. So hey, Draven, how's it going? Um, so anyway, that's number eight. Um, if if you're looking for something just like a little time waster thing to to like. Just immerse yourself in. It's a very pretty game. Very very pretty game. Uh, where's it, you know, yeah, yeah, and you sort of just wake your way through the through the ladders and through the doors and yeah, whatever. Anyway, number seven is uh, go away, uh, Vagris. Hey, look, that's me. <laughs> okay, I'm streaming Vagris right now. Uh, am I wearing the same shirt? Uh, <laughs> um, Vagris. Uh, now my opinions are not swayed in any way. With I don't care how much money they spend on the games. I should always I always make sure I say this. I don't care who made the game. I don't care how much money they spent on the soundtrack or uh, whether they put me on the Steam page or not. Um, I just care about how fun they are. Um, and Vagris, uh, I, I think the best way of describing Vagris is it's like a it's like a so if you're into D and D, it's like a solo D and D game, right? You sit, you kind of taken into this world it does a very good job of, of doing some some good world building um it also does a good job of uh like you normally when you play any game you you have your um your main quest uh and then you have your side quest you know along the way but you know what the, the one's the main quest one's the side quest this one like each time you, you sort of feel like you are actually um like your choices actually matter in the game, you know, and it actually changes. It, it feels like you're on this caravan in this sort of like fantasy Roman Empire post-apocalyptic caravan thing. Um, Lost Pilgrim Studio. Uh, this little thing is a, is a uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, an extension from Chrome that you can get. Shows you your the historical minimum and what the best price is. That's a uh, extension that I have over there. Um, but yeah, Vagris came out uh, October of this year, and uh, it's it's you know it's if you're a D and D person, that kind of thing. It is very tough. That's another thing I appreciate about it. Uh, think of it like you know like Kenshi or whatever. Uh, it's tough. It's it, it does not hold your hand, and uh, in fact, it takes your hand and beats you down with it. Um, and I appreciate that. You know, uh, my hand is held far too long these days. All right, on to Loop Hero. Am I on this one as well? No, no, me. That's okay. Okay, so Loop Hero. Uh, this is one that you'll probably find in other top ten lists. Um, actually, I don't know. I didn't look at any top ten lists. I know nor normally my top ten lists do not match other top ten lists because, um, well, my channel's about finding, finding the uh, the more niche stuff, the stuff that I'm. I find the indie of the indie games. I played one the other day that was made by a husband and wife team. Um, that's that's the good stuff. Someone that like you know has a day job, comes home nights and weekends, and works on their little their little project. That's the stuff I look for. Uh, stuff that's not uh, too um, widely known about. Loop Hero, however, got some attention. Twenty three thousand reviews on this thing. So yeah, it's it's known about, um, but it is really good. It it takes sort of that roguelike idea, um, which I've played many many roguelikes, and uh, it really spins twisted right changes things. That's what I'm looking for. Stuff that that is different than your usual thing. And uh, this one certainly is that. Rather than just being the guy on the journey through the dungeon, you create the dungeon. And you sort of, uh, I don't know a better way of describing it. It's, it's again, deck builder, not my thing. Um, but it just does it well where you're sort of building this dungeon as the guy goes through. And you're sort of, yeah. Um, by four quarters. Uh, what I, I had notes all these things. I didn't, say, didn't forget anything. Oh, my note is roguelike. I didn't apparently do that one <laughs> okay so it's a roguelike but it's it twists it you know it's different um and it does a very good job of of throwing you into there i think i did a live stream on this one and i ended up playing it for like four hours and i like like time flew by um when i was into this one and uh yeah certainly belongs it's gonna be on more than my list and it belongs there number five is curious expedition two now i didn't play a lot of the first one and 
from the the reviews I see, there's only a couple negative reviews, but the ones that I see, I guess 88 is is the all reviews. Um, a lot of folks seem to complain. Well, mostly from my channel um, comments is about the Expedition One was this pixel art thing. This one is not. Um, I don't really remember Curious Expedition One real well, and so I liked I liked the look of this one. I thought it was really pretty, and I thought it was really well done. Um, so it's a uh, it's an exploration game. Exploration game. It's sort of in that late 1800s. You know, go out and explore the strange world, bring back loot, uh, whether it belongs to you or not, and uh, make some some make a name for yourself by Mansion and Mensch and Thunderful Publishing. Uh, this is a uh, it's it's a blending of something like it's like that Age of Discovery, Oregon Trail kind of of thing. We, we send her out, we go build ourselves a party, we go from point to point. Uh, adventures happen between the way. You sort of explore the world. And um, uh, it calls it a roguelike, I guess. Um, I suppose it fits that. But I think I, I I was drawn to the exploration um, part of the game, which is which is the game basically. And uh, and and I didn't. I I was reading through some um, someone talking about this one. Might have been one of the one of the reviews on it talked about it being Oregon Trail. I didn't think about it until today when I was making these notes. And yeah, it's it's a. It's a it's a reimagined um, Oregon Trail. I think probably fits probably fits it really well. And that I I like that. Uh, if you mention the older games, I'll, I'll be sold on it. Reminds you of a bit of an old Commodore game. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, some, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I, I I agree. Uh, number th- four, number four. So uh, again, this is another one that I. I I like my strategy games. I like my city builders. I like my colony builders. I like my god games. Um, I do not like Souls-like games or, or or Metroidvania games. I do not like them. I get uh, I get offers to uh, of, like keys, like hey, play that game for m- more mo- Metroidvanias than anything else. I don't like them. Um, I, I just my fingers don't work, and it's just not my thing. I don't enjoy it. Um, Tales of Iron. Um, I probably wouldn't have played this one, but they, um, I, I, I wouldn't have even really bothered to look at it, but they, they, they offered a sponsorship. And so I thought, okay, I'll take a look at it. Um, it looked really good. And I thought, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. I'll, I'll play this one. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, it was really good. Uh, <laughs> um, obviously it's on my list, but it is. So the, the thing about it that makes it a game that I like rather than one that I don't like is it. I didn't know how to explain this. I'm terrible at explaining. This is why I keep my opinions to myself. I'm bad about explaining these kind of things. Um, It has tight gameplay. Does it make sense? This is what I wrote down. Tight gameplay. Like, how to explain this? Um, You're a little rat guy, right? You go on this little adventure, and and, and you got to kill other little frog folks and whatever. Um, Whenever you attack, whenever you hit control or alt or whatever to attack, it feels good. Um... Like it, you know, it just, the fighting is good. The fighting and then the blocking was like shift or whatever. It feels good. Um, and it's not like a jump on this beam, jump on this plank to get to the next level. Uh, tactile. Yeah, yeah. It has a very good, a very good tactile feel to the game. And um, I did that sponsorship and I was, I was quite happy with that one because that was, um, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad they said something because, it was one of my favorite uh, ones of the year. Obviously, it's number four. Also, there's like a little story in there, um, which which is which is always something I look forward to seeing. Is um, the the animals in the game? Like you're like a red. Your name's Reggie. You're a rat with a sword. Um, uh, the the rats that are in the game are named after like rats from real life. Um, they have like a picture of their pet rats that they had, and that that's what they named the characters after. That's good stuff. Um, but a Souls-like thing that... A Souls-like game for non-Souls-like people. There you go. That's my sales pitch. Um, all right. So number three. Um, so before we get to the top three, let's talk about... Because those top three, all three of these top three I had uh, throughout the day, yesterday and, and today, I had switched them around. I wasn't sure who to put number one, who to put number three. I couldn't decide. I've, I've decided now. Um, but all three of them could work as, as, as number one. It's like pirates melee combat. It's even better than that. It's like like um, it's like Monkey Island combat. You got to throw some insults in there. It just feels good, and, and the sound is good. Uh, okay, so let's go talk about. I've, I, we've got eight, um, uh, four release games out of the way. Let's talk about the early access ones. I, I omitted the early access games this year 
because um, I want to talk about them separately. So it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem fair putting early access things in here with full release things because you never know. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about is Keeper RL. Well, the first one we'll talk about is Keeper RL, which is one of my favorite games ever. And it is it has been updated. I'm I'll put it on the list this year because it's been updated twice this year. We got, uh, by the way, the Keeper RL is a, um, it's like a, um, it's an intro to Dwarf Fortress. Um, it, it's it's the first step. Like if you if you like watching Dwarf Fortress, you want to play Dwarf Fortress, um, but you just don't get Dwarf Fortress and it's just too much. It's just ugly. Um, Keeper RL is the game for you. Uh, you're, you are uh, building a dungeon. It's like a fantasy world, you know. You build your dungeon or whatever. However, you are the bad guy. And uh, you were bringing the orcs and the goblins and the, and the harpies. And, and they come and live with you and the skeletons and all that. Um, there's This This is made by one guy. Electric Sucky, sucky by here. Um, he is, uh, um, yeah, released 2015. It's one of those kinds that is just, it's always in early access. But it is updated all the time. We had two alphas that came out this year. One of them brought us... Uh, we can now be dwarves, so if you want to play Dwarf Fortress Light, then there you go. Uh, that's there now. You can beat the good guys. Uh, it also brought in a necromancer faction, faction which I um, I would be lying if I said that that was the reason I'm putting it on the list, because um, I, I am a fan. And um, you can be a necromancer, and you can bring in skeletons and zombies, and, and you'll conquer the world. So, um, yeah, if if you are into Dwarf Fortress... And you, uh, but you don't, if you're into Dwarf Fortress, but you can't get into Dwarf Fortress, if that makes sense, then Keep Royal is your thing. Um, you can pick it up here. Uh, you can pick it up pretty cheap uh, at times. It's it's 20 bucks right now. You can also get it for free if you donate to a wildlife charity over on their page. So that's also a cool thing that they do. Uh, we're going to go over to, uh, next one we got is Star Sector, which I'm actually playing at the moment. Uh, I put this on the list because it had, uh, I think it has two updates this year. Uh, it had the base, the colony building one was this year, I think. Uh, then just had a new one that just came out. Again, another one of my game, my, my, my favorites of uh, ever, and um, it only gets better every time I play it. Uh, thanks, Last Gunslinger. Where you know it's um, I, someone enlightened me as as to uh, the best way of explaining this one and why I like this one. It is it is Sid Meier's Pirates in Space. Um, that's really all there is to it. I mean, that's I don't know any better way of putting it. Just without the dancing. Uh, they just need to enter. Uh, if someone, if someone is a mod maker for first um, Star Sector, please give me some dancing, and I'm sold. Uh, and, and it'll be number one next year. That's all it takes. <laughs> um, you go around. You can be a pirate. You can be a trader. You can be a smuggler. You can do whatever you want. You can fight for the for the factions. Uh, it is not multiplayer. Um, I was just looking at some of the mods. Some of the mods today. Uh, that Nexalorin one. Um, is fantastic, and I want to start a new playthrough just so I can play with that. But the mod support on this is is really good as well, which which just adds in more stuff. Um, and what adds in you know, like like a dynamic universe, things grow. It turns into like a like a four X game more than just being a you know uh, that thing. So anyway, there's Star Sector. I gotta make sure I mention that one. Uh, I do want to say something about Tailspire, uh, which is in early access right now. This is this is what I use for Dungeons and Dragons now, since we are all. Uh, locked away at our houses uh, from time to time uh, by Bouncy Rock, and I was a I, got, I was a Kickstarter person on this one, and I've been playing it for a long time. Uh, it gets better and better. Uh, it's not really a game; it's just more of a uh, there's a word for it. It's a tabletop. Um, what do you call it? There's a word for it. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a it's a table. It's an interactive tabletop. Whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, it's a utility. Um, but for for D and D, it's it's great. Um, build your dungeons out, and then some of the folks that make that work on this, it's just a it's just a fun thing just to play around with it by making like things. If you're if you're into just making stuff, um, and they're supposed to be getting support where we're gonna have be able to make our own figures as well. So it's yeah, it has it has made um, Discord D and D um, bearable, a lot of fun. So I want to make sure I mention that because it's good stuff. Thanks, uh, Pommel. Thanks for the follow. So, uh, next one we're going to go to is Heroes Hour. This one just got its Steam page. It's over on H.I.O. right now, early access. Um, Heroes of Might and Magic. It's just a it's a remake of Heroes of Might and Magic, pretty much, by Benjamin Hauer. And uh, it's, it's got a publisher of Goblins Publishing, so it's 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 getting there. Um, it, uh, I don't know how a better way of explaining this than, than, than it's, it's Heroes of Might and Magic with, like, an auto-battler whenever you go into the battle. So it's just, like, a quicker 
version of that. Uh, take your fantasy race, conquer the world. Um, and uh, it's it's on itch right now, but I guess it'll be there uh, eventually over on Steam. And I, this is what I'm looking for. I'm very much looking forward to playing uh, more when it hits full release, or maybe even before then. Uh, Book of Travels is another early access, early access one I meant, want to mention. Um, this one's weird. This one fits that weird category where it's it's a multiplayer game, uh, but it doesn't really feel like a multiplayer game. And um, I I've just played a I haven't played a lot of this one. I'm I'm holding out for for more updates and and that which is why it's here. It's kind of a um, a looking forward to kind of one, but it, uh, I don't know, I, th- I think I, I, I called it before, it's like a, like, um, it kind of has a Kenshi feel to it, where it's just sort of like open world, you're kind of just thrown into the place, you're not sure what you're getting into, but this, it's this massive world that seems dynamic, and, uh, is very pretty, um, you can see on the, uh, can I make it bigger? Uh, yeah, um, and it's, it's just a, it's, it's an experience. Uh, I didn't put notes down for these. I probably should have because I'm out of things to talk about. Uh, um, yeah, that's right. So um, that, that, uh, that's one that I, I'm, I'm anxiously keep, keeping an eye on for. Uh, next one is Kanga. I have here. Kanga, Seeds of Civilization. This one uh, came out here back in November by, uh, by Eric Rimpin. And uh, it's a it's a village builder. It's a colony sim. I play a lot of those kind of things. The it it kind of takes that colony sim and then god game feel to it as well. But it throws in like giant monsters. There's big crabs you can build your town on. It really throws in a lot of of variety and weirdness to it. A, a village builder, like a primitive village builder. Um, and uh, I'm I'm e- I'm I'm eagerly awaiting this one, getting some more developments and 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 whatever. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. When I played it a while back, uh, and the last early access one, I um, if I didn't mention this, there would be a riot on my channel. But that's World Box. Oh, World Box! Um, it's, it is really a fun game, uh, and I, I have I have thoroughly enjoyed the. Uh, I guess I've had like a year and a half or so that I've been playing this thing. Um, it's a god game that you uh, you you make your land. You it's like a it's like a world builder in one. It's a it's a uh, a god game in one. You can like put your your fantasy factions out there and let them battle it out, or you can throw nukes at them. You know, whatever. But it's uh, it keeps developing the the way that I'm that I'm hoping that it that it develops, where it's like puts emphasis on the the AI and not the uh, the the dumb parts. You know. So yeah, yeah. Harry was in a riot. So there you go. There's a comment already. Uh, so, but anyway, Warbox is great, and um, I played it. Uh, I have it on my phone. And I've I've dabbled with it here, so um, I've even, I've even dabbled with World Box on on days whenever like I'm sick and I'm just going to sit and I want to do something. I'll, I'll sit back and play some World Box. I'll throw in a couple orcs and and some dwarves and just sort of let them do the thing. It's kind of fun. It's fun to watch. It's like um, it's like God Game TV. You know, you build your little villages and sit back and watch. So yeah, there you go. That there is the early access part of the of the video out of the way. Mappa Imperium. I should mention that. Um, I probably wouldn't be right of me to put that in my list though, because, uh, uh I made it. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, okay. Back, back to our regular, uh, things. These are the released games of the year. Number three, Conquest of Elysium five. This is by Illwinter, same folks that made Dominions, um, five and all the other ones. Um, so this is a, I think this is what, what it, it's a, uh, let me say, let me explain what I like about it. And then it'll make sense. Um, I'm a big fan of like, and for years I've wanted to play a game that sort of feels like the old Master of Magic or Civilization Two or Heroes of Might and Magic. Um, remember those old those old ones? That's when you played them, and even going back to them now and playing them, they're good games. Um, we've had some remakes, and they're just not they're just not the same. This one's probably the closest I've I've played of something like the old. It reminds me of something like the old. I used to play those Civ two scenarios. Remember those? Like you could, you could, um, uh, uh, like you completely redo, redesign the game of Civ two, where you could have like a fantasy version of it or a Star Wars version of it. Like, and yeah, it's like that. Uh, it's a fantasy thing. If you've played Dominions, it's that. Just um, take it down a notch as far as complexity, and it's a quick turn based fantasy game. Touch of roguelite, roguelike. Uh, but basically, you know, you're, it's an empire, fantasy empire building thing, and done really well. It's ugly, 
uh, it ain't anything to look at, but uh, it is it is a lot of fun, and uh, it is number three. <clears throat> Angus and Mangus has never heard of any of these games. That's that's my life. That's that's what I do. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so uh, there there is that one. Um, I won't make these pictures bigger. I'll go to the next ones. So uh, you can so you can see my probably should have done that before. But there you go. There is there's there's conquest. It's ugly. Uh, number two. I really want to put this in those number one, but I made it. Oh, it's me again. <laughs> okay. Let's scroll down here for a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a little embarrassing. Um, this, this is Dwarf Romantic. Uh, it, it is a, a peaceful building strategy and puzzle game. Uh, it's, it's like Carcassonne. But we are we are building a world, and now there's a reason this is this is on my list. Um, <laughs> um, actually, this is a good chance I'm on number one as well. But we're not we're not like <laughs> anyway. Um, this is a game that it's relaxing, right? It's it's a it's a it's basically a board game, and you take your little tiles and you put them wherever they want to go. You know, this one kind of fits in the same category as like Labyrinth City, where it's just. You just sit back. It's a I called it a a board game and and world maker with purpose is what I wrote down here. Um, like you, if you like something like, um, like World Box or like Islanders or any of those like or, or uh, what's the other one? What's the Townscaper where you're like building a little town? You kind of sit back and build the town. Um, if you like those kind of buildy kind of things, just making a pretty little landscape. It's that. But with purpose, because you have you have goals you have to hit, and you have um, you know you have reasons for what you're doing, and it, and it has that one more term, one more turn feel to it. Uh, one time, this is a few months ago. I, w I was sick, and so I couldn't record or anything. And I just said I was I was in here for actually for days uh, and hours, just in here playing Dwarf Romantic because uh, I I didn't have the you know headache and all that stuff. I didn't have the mental. Uh, um, Whatever. I didn't want to play anything that made me think. I wanted to just sit back and play some Dwarf Romantic. And, and so that's why it's number two on my list. Hey, thanks, Ferge, for the follow. All right, you ready for number one? Now, this was number two uh, about about two hours ago, and I switched it over. But I decided it, 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 it deserves number one because it's really good. And it is. Uh, I say it wrong, but I'm sticking to it. It's Wilder Myth. Some people call it Wilder Myth. Even including the devs, but I will call it Wilder Myth until, um, well, forever. Uh, this is a uh, a storytelling RPG, a story rich RPG. Choices matter. Uh, it's social, it's essentially, ability, it's like a, a blending of XCOM with uh, with this sort of like comic book kind of a thing. And the reason, the reason it's number one, is the character development. Um, I've, I've played a lot of games and I've, I've learned in my in my older years of, of playing games that I really like games that make me care about the characters. Like if I go in and I play RimWorld and I got, you know, Stan the Doctor. Um, and, you know, I, I get attached to Stan the Doctor. He, he chops someone's leg off when he's meaning to give him heart surgery or whatever. Um, he gets assaulted by some some bugs or whatever. And I feel for, for Stan the Doctor. Um, but that's it. On this one, there's like a care, you know, there's a proper character. You get to, you pick up your characters whenever they're like, you know, 17 years old or whatever, sort of D and D or fantasy RPG style, and you take them through this story. Um, things will happen to them. They may get like a gem for an eye, or they get some wings or some point at some point in the game, and um, you know, and and then while you're playing, you really start getting attached to those characters, like like you are sort of. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to. I'm terrible at explaining these things, but um, they 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 kind of have their own story that they are in, and that you are, in. and you can play. Yeah, you can play parent and child. I had that one of my first ones. I had. I had one of my favorite character. She ended up. She like had like a a stumpy foot. Uh, I think she got like a she she got like the gem or something on her eye. She got some wings, um, and then she got old and had a kid, and then that kid. Uh, I leveled up and, and sent sent uh, him on his on his way. Um, I had another guy who got like this. He like got like wear things. He got like a wolf head and. But then he, as he goes through it, so they hit like they're like sixty years old. They go retire. Um, they feel alive. Yes, yes. What do I classify as an indie game? I probably a little more. I'm probably a little more picky on that 
don't listen, don't look at my last year's video. I, um, but I'm normally a little more picky on that. Um, and I really like the ones that are more, you know, like single or a few folks working, working on it. When you get like hundred person dev teams, I don't know if that's I'm sure you can call it any game, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's my, that's my whatever. So there we go. There is my list. There, there, um, if you have any questions, I'm sure you will uh, disagree uh, and you will find other lists that will probably not have any of these games in there. Uh. <laughs> um, but that's what I do. I, I seek out the weird and the, um, and the less known stuff. And these are my favorite weird and less known indie games of, of 2021. It was a good year. I, I, I was extra, extra picky about it. And um, I'm, I'm very happy with, with e each uh, of these. I had a lot of fun with them. So <clears throat> that's it. So thanks for, uh, if, you, if you're watching the VOD of this, thanks for watching. If you're in the, uh, the live stream of this, we're just going to play something else. So there we go.